All right, YouTube. Working on the 2010 Lincoln MKT uh, again. Had one of my headlights go out, but working. Uh, I noticed it was getting moisture in it. Um, the, the lens was always fogged up on the inside when it would get rain and moisture outside and the humidity was high. So one day the headlight just quit working on the way to work. So uh, pulled it apart and uh, come to find out my, uh, my high voltage ballast had went bad. And as you can see, the board is all wet and corroded and basically exploded on itself when water hit it. So I ordered a new ballast off of eBay. It's not new, it's, well, it's new old stock from what it said on the description, but it's the same brand, which is OEM. Um, these are normally sealed units, so water usually doesn't get in them. But this one was very corroded from water getting in the housing. Um, and then it finally ended up cracking. Right here there's a crack in the housing and I could probably break this ear off. Yeah. So it cracked from the expansion from the corrosion. The corrosion makes the aluminum expand and then it cracks. And then water just flowed right in and ruined it and blew the bulb as well. So I ordered one of these eBay. It was like $40. So it's still on the way, I haven't received it yet. But uh, in the meantime, I noticed the lens wasn't sealed. There was moisture getting in somehow. So I figured it was the seal between the lens and the housing, which it was. The, the, the rubber seal that they use uh, was very hard and it was, um, wasn't in there very well. It, it basically pulled right out. So I'm gonna reseal this piece into this housing once I get the new ballast installed and wired up and everything. But uh, you ask, why am I going through all this trouble? Why don't I just buy a new headlight assembly? The answer to that is, is these headlight assemblies are $1,000 a piece new. Used ones on eBay are about five to 700 because of the projector Xenon headlight assembly. Is really expensive and because of the projector assembly has motors on it that actually aim the headlights left and right when you're steering and driving down the road so that makes this really expensive for some reason that in the car itself uh, for anybody that might own a Lincoln MKT um, it's a rare car they only made 57,000 of them which, when you compare that, that might seem like a lot, but when you compare that to other production models, it's nothing. It's so small. Um, so that's one of the reasons why parts for this vehicle aren't readily available, you know, everywhere, and there's not a lot of aftermarket support for this car because they only made so many. And most of the people that drove them, um, no offense to these type of people, that's just the way their lives are lived, but they're kind of, they drive it till it's, till they're done with it, and they throw it away. They're not really like car people, they don't keep them and customize them, and, you know. So there's no high drive for the aftermarket to support these vehicles. That's what I'm trying to say. So, you have to fix the stuff that you have, because I'm not spending a thousand dollars for a headlight assembly. That's just crazy. And uh, there's none in any junkyards near me. And I'm sure that uh, if there was one in the junkyard, the front end would probably be all smashed in and the headlights would junk anyway. So. Uh, I'm still waiting for parts, so I'm gonna continue this video. Um, I already pulled the bumper to get the headlights out. So what I'll do is I'll film it in reverse so that anybody that needs to get to their headlights to change bulbs can see how to take the bumper off to get the headlights out. That's what I'll do. Um, the parking lights, uh, the turn signal bulb in here, all it does is the turn signal. It's a dedicated circuit. The parking lights that are in these are LED from the factory, and they're built into this little harness that's inside the light. They're just surface mount LEDs on a little board. And these kind of like mount over here in this little, they fit in this little groove. 
and there's a screw that holds it. And then this side does the same thing. It just kind of fits over here. And a plug will plug in and the harness runs around the back. And then there's LEDs here for your parking lights. Those are just your little marker parking lights. And, um, but they're on boards, but they had all that galvanic mess on them too. So I cleaned them up with some electronics cleaner, uh, pulled them out of their, pulled them out of their homes. Make sure they weren't corroded. Make sure the components, there's a few components on this board here that drives these LEDs. Uh, making sure that they weren't corroded and messed up. And I actually may um, actually have some uh, conformal coating for PC boards and I may spray these just to seal them up um, from corrosion. They should have been done like that from the factory, but they didn't do it. Most car companies, they're only looking to get five to six years out of a car these days crazy but so I'm gonna slowly start putting this back together what I can do um, without the uh, ballast and then when the ballast comes we'll, we'll roll on Have to get it in the plug. You're just going for a light coat just to protect it. And then let it dry. as good as it's going to get for now. It's much better than it was. When I first got this car, these were faded beyond belief. And I buffed them and buffed them until they are what they are. It's out of control. This is a synthetic UV wax protectant that 3M makes and it comes with their headlight buffing kits and uh, it just goes on to protect the headlight against fading in the future and that sort of thing. These 3M headlight kits seem to work pretty well. I've been using them for years and you can usually do like four or five sets of headlights with one kit, sometimes more depending on the size of the lights. But, uh, this stuff I kind of just like gently work in. Try to fill in all the little nooks and crannies of the plastic. This plastic might look smooth, but it is porous as belief. And uh, this stuff will fill in all those little pores and try to add a little bit of a UV protectant to it. Keep them from fading. And park them in the shade. What I tend to do is I like to pull my cars uh, in the driveway. I'll pull them right up against the garage so that the headlights are always in the shade. And then the cars that I park behind those cars, I pull them right up against the back of the other cars. I try to uh, try to keep the headlights out of the sun as much as possible. 
especially on uh, today's cars because they're all plastic. And it seems like the newer the car, the faster they fade. I don't know if it's the cheaper plastics or what. What I'm doing now is took a shop towel and some of this spray away glass cleaner, the best glass cleaner that you could buy. Gonna just dampen the towel a little bit and try to get in through this hole and clean this inside of this light out a little bit as best I can. Kind of like cleaning the windshield on your car. Just uh, do the best you can. <laughs> And actually, uh, actually getting in here better than I thought I would. But uh, yep, clean the lens a little bit, and then I'm gonna wipe down the inside of the reflector. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, try to wipe down the inside of the reflector. There was uh, all that corrosion from that aluminum was floating around in here making everything, uh, covering everything with this nastiness, so just trying to make this thing last a little longer. Uh, I don't want to buy a new one. Now I could take this reflector out of here. Uh, this, all this black is the back side of that silver reflector, but um, it's melted in place in a bunch of different places they have a bunch of uh, there's like plastic tabs and they just melt them uh, as you can see right right here and right there and you would have to unmelt all of them to get this to pop out and I'm not really um, yeah so just clean it the best I can which uh, I think it looks pretty good that'll be the projector the turn signal goes there and then you have your marker light on the side I think it turned out pretty damn good. So we're gonna stick with that. And uh, now I'm going to put my RTV. I'm gonna clean this uh, clean this lip with some uh, probably brake clean or alcohol or something and uh, get it ready for adhesive. I already cleaned the other side of the unit so now I'm just gonna clean this one. There's a little bit of adhesive left on here. I'll scrape that off, it kind of peels off. You can peel it off with your fingers. Um, but just going to clean it up and get it ready to uh, be put back together. So here we go. Just picking off all the little rubber that's left behind. Make sure you got it all off the inside and the outside lips. There's some under this clip here. I'm going to get a a little screwdriver and uh, scrape it on. Believe it or not guys, I know it's probably not the best hygiene thing, most people can't deal with, deal with it, but fingernails I have mine pretty short right now, but my pointer ones are getting a little longer. They're probably one of the most useful tools for scraping this stuff off, honestly. I use my fingernails to scrape all kinds of stuff all the time, and it's kind of an invaluable tool. <laughs> They're there. They're natural. Use them. I, I try not to usually leave my pointers a little longer than the rest because of that reason in electronics and even doing car stuff your fingernails you end up using them all the time um, it's just one of them things scraping this little rubber butyl off my fingernail works perfectly for it and I don't have to worry about my nail actually ruining the surface of the plastic because it's soft so I mean I know a lot of people don't like the longer nails but uh, look at this I can I can walk walk right around here and just scrape all this stuff off and not even uh, not even damage the surface or have to use a screwdriver. It's, it's a pretty invaluable tool I believe. Some people may disagree but everybody does their own thing and I just 
found my whole life that fingernails, your pointer fingernails are kind of invaluable tools. Especially if you don't have a tool in your hand at the time and you need to scrape something or whatever, they're there. So I'm just going to clean this lip around on the inside and the outside with some window cleaner. I was going to use alcohol or something, but uh, I figured uh, the window cleaner will clean it just fine. It's got it's got a um, good bit of cleaners in it to uh, really prep the surface for a good adhesion. So, and I'm just spraying the spraying the rag. It kind of just running it on the inside and the outside of the lip at the same time doing stuff like this it reminds me of my dad when he used to paint cars preparation is 95 percent of the job and actually painting the car was like the last 10 minutes it felt like so preparation in this stage may seem like it takes forever but uh, in the end it will pay off big time that's funny, there's a lot of surface area on these headlights you don't ever see. All this, from here down, all this is covered by bumper. All this is covered by bumper. So really all you see is from here to here. That's it. The rest of this light is just dummy space. So on the back side here you have all this extra space. You don't even have to worry about messing with it because it's just... Alright, so as of now... Getting ready to glue the front of the light back on with uh, my RTV adhesive. And, uh, you have to prep this housing. You got to put all your little lights and wires in before you put this back together because I don't believe you'll be able to do it all through the little the little access holes. You might, but. It'll be easier just to get it prepped out this way. Now I got these, I spray painted these earlier with conformal coating. As you can see, they're nice and shiny. That's the acrylic conformal coating. That will protect these from corrosion in the future. And it doesn't affect the way they work. They all marine application PC boards, any kind of PC board that's gonna be uh, exposed to the elements, they usually conformal coat it. They didn't do these, don't know why. I guess they expected the headlight housing to be sealed enough, but it wasn't. So, this little guy here kind of just fits in a channel. And you just kind of push it in there. This is your parking light assembly. And then a screw goes in here. These are actually stainless screws, which I'm happy to see. And they painted the heads of them black, so they are not seen. But it's a stainless screw, and it just kind of threads in here, just to hold the board in place so it doesn't fall out. And just snug it. And I'm just using T15 T-handles. You can use a screwdriver or whatever, but they're Torx 15. Now this wire just kind of tucked down in here and ran around the bottom here. You won't see any of it anyway. Um, this little clip goes down here and there's a piece of plastic sticking out that the clip slides onto to hold the wire out of the way. Some kind of like wire management which uh, works out nice. And then this side of the light there's uh, two pegs and three screws. The pegs come through the smaller holes. If you can find them, there we go. They come through the small hole in the oval hole, and then you put your, four, your three screws in. Now you might be tempted to run these in with a drill or an impact. Um, I took them apart with an impact because taking them apart is a little different than putting them together. But. Uh, you're, you're screwing into plastic and you're holding a PC board that's delicate. It's not super delicate, but it is delicate. You can crack it. And you don't want to do that. So just run these in and snug them. They're going into plastic. Um, I don't know if you know anything about screwing into plastic. Well, plastic is kind of like a... It, 
the screw fits tight enough into the plastic that I've never had screws back out of plastic housings before unless the threads in the plastic were really stripped. So you don't really need anything or worry about it coming apart. And uh, that's that. So now we're going to move on to this part of the harness. Um, this part of the harness here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the main plug through the body of the uh, light fixture first. And that way it's in its place and then all the wires kind of fall into place. It's got a rubber gasket on it so make sure you pull it through all the way and it seats. And, uh, rubber gasket fits in there good. Now this is your turn signal so I'll just stick it out that hole. Um, this, this harness here that has the other metal clip on it, there's another plastic piece under here. I'm just going to get these out of the way for the moment. There's another plastic piece under here that this is going to clip onto for wire management. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I guess you probably can. Um, and you're just going to push it onto that other plastic uh, nip down there. And that will hold this part of the harness in place. down in there you see the two they clip on the plastic things and that keeps these wires out of the way of the mechanism because this mechanism moves so you got to keep these wires and this wire here plugs into this board here and powers your parking lights and, uh, I'll probably maybe put a little zip tie down here I'm not sure but uh, we'll see like I said all this area is like you never see it so the wires are down in there the only part you see through the front lens is this headlight the rest of this is covered with reflector so anything going on down in this area or over in here it really doesn't matter what's you know because you don't see it anyway all right so this wire here goes to the high voltage what am i trying to say the ballast so this one you're going to want to go down with and I'll just stick it down here. This wire here goes to, so this little wire connector here goes to this motor right there. There's a little plug right here. And I'll show you where it goes. So I'm just gonna tuck this wire back behind here and uh, plug this thing in. So, that white plug goes right there onto the side of that motor. Pretty, uh, pretty easy. Now, there's a there's a plug here. Let's push these wires down away from this mechanism. Because, like I said, it does move. Now, this this plug here comes from the other motor. That is. Uh, on the other side that does your up and down um, and this plug here plugs into it like I said they're all the plugs only fit together you can't mix them up plug that one in push it down out of the way and then you have your last harness that goes from your thing up to your headlight bulb so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just wait until I get my um... all right so we're gonna do a bulb replacement tutorial here real quick your bulb is gonna be in there like that what you're gonna need is a T10 Torx 10 screwdriver and there's a screw on either side of the bulb and you're gonna take those two screws out but first before you take those screws out you're gonna to want to unplug the bulbs so take a little flathead screwdriver and right here on the top of this plug just grab a hold of it push down and the plug will come off take those two screws out now your housing is going to be closed you're not going to have access like I do so make sure when the screw gets loose you take a pair of needle nose pliers in there and grab the screw because it will fall down inside the housing and you may not get it back uh, once you get those two screws out you're going to take the bulb and pull it straight out and this is what it looks like 
This is a blown one. You don't want to touch the glass of the new bulb at all. But uh, this bracket here gets transferred over to your new bulb. So you're going to want to do that. Uh, you don't want to forget to do that. Get your new bulb ready, whether it's a new, a new xenon or a LED. And you're going to want to orient the LED bulb the same way this is with the plug down. And you're going to want to slide this bracket. You can see this bracket fits on here and there's a little notch right there. So you're going to want to slide this off like that. And you're going to take the new bulb and you're going to slide this on the new bulb. And line that little notch up again to where this is horizontal with the bulb. And then you could take this and stick it in here, just like the old bulb. And there's little alignment pins. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your screwdriver and your uh, pointy nose pliers because you don't wanna lose your screws. Take your pointy nose pliers and uh, kinda work them down in here. get it in the hole <laughs> and leave that one a little loose till you get your other one in and I'll get you a uh, close-up shot here in a minute of how this looks you kind of want to grab a hold of the head of the screw Put the screw in your pointing nose pliers and then you can take your screwdriver and stick it in here. And basically you're just going to walk it in here. Once you get it in the hole you can take your needle nose pliers out and then just get it started. Once it's started, both sides are aligned, you can snug these up. Now you're going to want to tighten these pretty tight, but not too tight. Don't break the mechanism that moves. Just snug them because this mechanism moves and if you're using LED bulbs like I am these cooling fans will actually have a little bit of vibration to them so those bulbs can fall out if not careful and then this is your converter for these types of LED bulbs if you're just putting the regular xenons in you won't need you won't have that you'll just you know plug it in the normal way but uh, I'm just gonna take this Plug it into here. Make sure it's seated good, and then this will get this will get pushed down inside here. As long as it's down in the bottom, it really won't hurt anything. And just tuck your wires in, and uh, you should be good to go. And then. Uh, You'll be ready to uh, put your little caps back on, make sure they're tight and snugged, and you'll be able to put your headlight back in the car. But that's how you change the Xenon bulbs in this Lincoln setup. There you go. Alright, so now I'm happy enough with everything that I'm going to put the outer shell on here. Open up my RTV adhesive here. Make sure it's flowing. And uh, I'm going to sit this on its back a little bit. And I'm just going to fill the channel with a nice thick heavy bead.
that's it. Any that oozes around the outside, if it comes outside, you can wipe it off. Um, but uh, if it goes inside, it'll be fine because you won't really see it. But uh, take your prepped and cleaned headlight housing, and uh, I like to start in this compound corner here, um, just because it's a tight corner and it's kind of a pain in the ass. These things should just snap together. It already is. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape and wrap around this corner over here because it kind of likes to expand. These, um, this clip here and this clip here don't like, it doesn't really like to hold very tight for some reason. Um, so what I like to do is I'll take some electrical tape and give it a good stretch. So it, it wants to pull, it wants to pull it together. The stretchiness of the electrical tape will pull it together and hold it really well. And it won't hurt the surface. Now over here you can see it's making a good seal. It's pushed, it's pushed in and it's oozing, which is good. And I'm going to wrap this part of the light as well. Basically what you want is you want to make sure that the RTV is making good contact. Now once this cures, you can go around and put another bead around this outside. Like up here, it's actually really good. It, it fused out. But some other spots, maybe I didn't put quite enough in. It's probably plenty. But uh, what I'll do is once this cures, and you can actually see it on the inside of the lens. Um, it's it's doing a really good job on the inside, so the out, it's probably fine. But um, what I'll do before I put it back in the car after this cures, I might put a little bit more in this lower once it cures. But uh, what I'll do is uh, hit it with the garden hose and see how many water gets in it. Um, this corner here is real good and like I said the electrical tape helps helps squeeze it together because these little clips are kind of really shitty so there you go we'll let that cure up and uh, we'll come back to it